That was disgusting. It's a Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast, SFW. And that was kind of loud there with the music. But hey, <laughs> we're still getting everything set up. Huzzah. Huzzah. Uh, so, Royal Rumble is in the books and everyone is pissed off. Well, let's discuss about that when we get to the... Well, let's discuss about that first off. Uh, Casey, why don't you give me a bit of a rundown on it? Just for layman's terms for everybody out there. Okay. Actually, no. Uh, there's one thing I want to do before any of that. Okay. Uh, if you're not a part of the internet community, uh, y- there has been an incident recently that has affected all of us. Oh? Uh, if you're not familiar with Channel Awesome, this probably won't hurt you, but if you are, this is going to come as a big shock. Recently, we... Well... Recently, fans of Channel Awesome and the producers there lost a fam... Lost a family member. Uh, Justin Juario Carmichael did die the last Thursday. Uh, I hate to break the news down on this, but... I honestly feel like it's necessary to talk about this because while I'm I wouldn't say I am a huge fan of his, he was it was a really important time of my life when uh I was going through some hard times when I wasn't working and listening to his chats helped me out in a little bit as well as this podcast, so I do thank you for that, Casey. Sweet. But uh I'm gonna give I want you all to give uh, at least a little bit of a shout out to Juario and his family, and if you guys would be so kind to uh, donate to his cause so that his family, who has suffered this horrible tragedy, can actually, uh, you know, get back into gear. Uh, Most of it is going to be covering funeral expenses, from what I understand, so, if you're going, if you're going to do that, please, I ask you for your utmost care and consideration for this subject. And you know, let's be nice to let's be nice to everybody on this one. Uh, I'll give a link to K. I'll give a link to KC later on in the show that will that he will put up on YouTube. But uh, I just feel like it should be more. People should be informed. People should, you know, properly mourn. And they feel like they want to help out. Uh, there is a donation. Like I said before, there is a donation. And you should give to it. Uh, you don't have to give like a hundred bucks or anything. You can even you can just give five bucks and that'll be fine. So, yeah. I hate to bring the show down to that. But I really feel like we needed to discuss that before anything else. Sure. Okay. And for that note, we're not going to do... I am not going to do any more uh, jokes about death for a little bit while. It's just too soon. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we got to... Yeah, the t- the whole too soon thing. Yeah. I, I humbly agree. So, all right. Anyways. Uh, I, that's all I wanted. To, I wanted to say my piece on that. Now let's get to the funny stuff. Sports. Let's make fun of... Sports, let's make fun sports, of people sports, who make sports, more sports. money than me. Sports and wrestling. Wrestling. Okay, wrestling. what happened in Royal Rumble? Okay, Royal Rumble. So, everyone's pissed off at Royal Rumble. Uh, not for this reason, but for other reasons. Uh, we'll go down the card here. Uh, during the pre-show, we had the New Age Outlaws versus the Rhodes Brothers. New Age Outlaws uh, end up with the victory and new tag team champions. There you go. A 40-year-old team are now your new tag team champions. 14 years difference between the uh, this title reign and their last one. In WWE, I think they were also tag team champions in TNA, but who really cares about TNA? Yeah, who honestly does care? Yeah. But that is something unique. I honestly think that this, you know, people say, people are going to say that this is bullshit, and I totally agree with them on this one. This smells to me like uh, 
because you're friends with the new boss, you get no ride off. You get no free coattail ride. Uh, you I could, mean, you can argue that, yes. Sure. I'm not going to say that, uh, that they're not going, that they don't deserve it or they don't, uh, you know, don't belong here, but. You know, it just feels kind of wrong for bringing up these older, these older actors and trying to take the spotlight, spotlight away from the younger, newer, sh- newer people. Even if it is Cody Rhodes. Well, I see it as a different way. I see it as having the older uh, guys take the tag team champions once in a while can actually show the newer guys how to go. You know, in a more how how do I say, in a more dynamic way? Okay, I see what you're talking. Okay, I can agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so we got new tag team champions on the main show. We have Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt, and the match of the night, if I do say so myself, and everybody is actually saying that too. Um, Daniel Bryan comes up short. However, it was a great match. It's like you don't care who won. Oh, it's one of those matches where even though who who won, it doesn't matter because everybody did so amazingly well. It just is yeah. a great match to watch. It's sort of like, uh, this is a bad example. This is a very bad example because I'm guessing it's nowhere near as good as like the uh, the uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat match with him and Randy Savage in WrestleMania 3. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing it's sort of like that. Yeah, it it is sort of like that. And in fact, this match was originally going to be set at WrestleMania, but they had to hurry up the uh, the storyline because a certain college did a yes chant. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Uh, you should have. That should have. That's sad. They should have just stuck with it, and then just rode it on, and then they could have used that to build up a big momentum for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But, hey, we got a great match out of it. Just a little bit sooner this time Sooner around. than I expected. Yeah. But, overall, it's happy to see a good match with Daniel Bryan, because, good lord, he, ne- he needs it. Uh, I think next up, I could be wrong, I don't have the match order, but Big Show versus Brock Lesnar... Uh, mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar attacked Big Show right away with the steel chair before the bell, beat him up, got knocked out, sort of, and then F5 to Big Show for the three count. So Big uh, Big Show lost. Kind of expected wow. that. You know, I kind of expected him to lose, but I, that's really cheap. Well, the thing is, is that the beatdown before the match was like five minutes long. It still is kind of cheap. This is a pay per view, mind you. Yeah, I know, I know. And then five, and then five more minutes of beatdown with a steel chair, several steel chairs. I mean, you could get this on Raw. What is the point of paying the money for this? Like you said, it was. If I remember, like most pay per views cost like what forty bucks. Mm-hmm. Most pay per views cost forty bucks to get. And what's the di- What's the point when you could get this on Raw? You are paying, you are literally throwing your money away for this. Yeah, but nobody really wanted, nobody actually, you know, paid for this match, really, because nobody wanted it in the first place. Maybe not, but in the end, you gotta deliver at least a match. I don't give a shit if nobody wanted it. If you can make a good match. If you can make a match happen and it's a good match, you're going you have to make a good match. You don't short shit them by doing shit like this. Moving on. Um uh, we have that, that that's the one thing that annoys me about it. It's like you pay for for pay-per-views, you want to see a match. You don't want to see like something you could see on Raw. All right. Uh next up was the championship match, I think. The uh, oh the uh, Randy the, Orton Randy John Orton Cena John Cena match where the ones who actually won the match was the crowd as they chanted along pretty much the entire time in a very boring match the only 
the only good parts about it were Orton doing the uh, attitude adjustment and John Cena doing the RKO. I'm surprised John Cena can actually pull off an RKO. Well, yeah, he pulled it off. You couldn't really see it because it was out of frame. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> but yeah, failure on failure on the cameraman's shot. Expect. And, no, I blame the director because he could have gotten a good shot of that from probably a widescreen out. Mm-hmm. But no. Uh, yeah. Expect a Botchamania segment entitled uh, "Sing Along with the Crowd." Oh, yeah. But to discuss this match purposely, you know, Spoonie does the whole joke of Randy. whenever Randy Orton or John Cena come back together, he's, sh- he's shouting screams, ah, again, all that stuff, you know. And I think that's over-exaggerating it. But in a sense, he's not wrong. We have seen this match so many times. That I'm sorry, we're sick of it. We don't want to see it anymore. Yeah. And and to be fair, uh, well, not to be fair, actually, this is a very unfair <laughs> yeah, statement. Fuck. Uh, Fuck in this case. Yeah, it, we've gone from we've seen enough to we don't want to see it e- anyway. Pretty much, it's like. Mm-hmm. We're we're done with C Nation. We're past C Nation. It's dead. It's buried. Well, I'm not. We're just done. I'm, I'm not even talking about C Nation. I'm talking about the Cena Randy Orton matches because I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many matches have these guys had against each other? Mm, I could a probably lot. give a. It probably is in the double digits. And you never want that to happen. Yeah. So, Orton retains because uh, Wyatt interference. Well, not interference, but distraction. They First, the announcers were like, whose side is he on? Sort of thing. And basically, distractions, uh, Orton, RKO, Orton wins. And then Cena gets beat down by the Wyatt family. And this is like their continuing fight against the machine sort of thing. Because John Cena is still the face of the machine. And I can I can kind of see that logic. They're not wrong in that case. Mm-hmm. So, so that that's what they're up to now. So, Royal Rumble match itself. Now, this is where I see a lot of the... Uh... Flack going. Why don't you why don't you talk about that? Okay, so Casey. so the Royal Rumble match itself, it, it was okay, you know, Punk and Seth Rollins started out. And they, okay, they, that they, sounds nice. And they were actually good together. Uh, a bunch of people showed up. Uh Kevin Nash did a return. Sheamus returned. Oh, that's nice to see. And uh El Torito got the little uh I'm sorry, I just said that. <laughs> um, comedy I should sketch. flay you. I should flay you for that one. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> okay, so... If you say so. It, it, your words, not mine. Uh, Usually I'm the one who comes up with the dick jokes. Who's... <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's something completely different. Uh, JBL had a uh, 40 second appearance okay because yeah because he can uh, and he's Roman, JBL Roman Reigns was the MVP of the uh, Royal Rumble this year he eliminated 12 men beating Kane's record that's pretty impressive yeah just absolutely on fire and let's see there's more. Like I said, they're probably they're think they're probably thinking in the future for this kid because he's probably got one of the better futures mm-hmm, out of the shield. Yeah. Uh, it 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 goes along. Batista shows up. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's like, "Oh, it's Batista," and it's like, "Oh, yay, Batista!" 
and then he, some more entries come in. Alberto Del Rio comes in. We're getting mm-hmm. down to the wire. We get down to number 30, and out comes Rey Mysterio. And everyone just starts booing Aww. at Rey Mysterio because Daniel Bryan wasn't in the match. Everyone is hot for Daniel Bryan. He didn't have... He wasn't in the match. And the the well, crowd he... was just done. At that well, point. Well, not... Not to sound like a whole, a whole curmudgeon thing here, you know. Controversy aside, controversy aside about Daniel Bryan not being in the match, he did have a match earlier in the day. Yes. Yes, but uh, other people also had matches, mm-hmm. and were in the Rumble too. And <clears throat> I just feel bad for Mysterio on this case because he's gonna get shit on. For something that's not his fault. Oh, yeah, I know. I completely agree. It's not his fault. And the crowd cheered when he got eliminated. You know, again, not his fault. But Batista can't hand. It seems like Batista can't handle a 50 50 crowd. No, he can't. Because he's all like, yeah, I'm the. I'm going to win. Deal with it. Sort of thing. Flips off the crowd. Sort of thing. Uh, so, break through the yeah. TV. Uh, that was that was a tweet by Mick Foley. That they didn't get brick through the TV because they didn't give Daniel Bryan his dues. Yeah. Which, honestly, like I said before, I can see it. I can see the reason why, but I can also see, but I can also see their side as well. This is kind of disgusting. That they're just shitting on poor Daniel Bryan, who is be- who become one of the bigger names in the industry because when John Cena was injured, he took up the mantle pretty well. But now that John Cena's back, well, fuck that shorty. We're gonna we're go back to our big guy, big guy motif. Mm-hmm. Methinks that Vince McMahon still has a little influence in the system. Oh yeah, he still does. Uh, Mick Foley uh, said after the pay-per-view was finished, because again, Batista won, that he felt absolutely disgusted by the pay-per-view as a whole. And he wrote on his Facebook page how everyone, you know, really started to... This made news, sort of thing, around the world. Uh, And he he writes a follow-up. I'm going to read it here. All right, let's hear this. Okay, uh, Rumble Uproar Becomes World News. He goes, I honestly never expected the type of attention that both my tweet and my Facebook post about my displeasure about the Royal Rumble would bring. I was just expressing my opinion, and it seemed to be in line with many of you, and you had your mind last night as well. The response I got both on Twitter and Facebook dwarfed anything I'd received in the past, and I hope that WWE will recognize this unprecedented response as a sign that, with a little tweaking, might be needed in order to save WrestleMania from the prospect of 75,000 people booing, turning their backs, or walking around, walking out of its main event. Uh, last night's comments were not meant to, as a knock on Dave Batista. I like and respect Dave, and I am proud of what he has accomplished inside and outside the ring, but Dave is intense, unlikely to handle a heated 50-50 crowd with the same wink and a nod as served by John Cena. The WWE Universe so well, uh, full stop. Uh, besides, we're not looking at a spirited 50-50 response at Mania. We're looking at a potential of something akin to a mutiny, and I think Dave deserves better than that. Uh, he continues, on a, on a bright side, WWE has 10 weeks to make this thing right for its loyal audience and the potential to make this WrestleMania the most talked about and most interesting one of them all. Where there's a will, there's a way, but unless Daniel Bryan is involved, that way just doesn't seem possible to this particular wrestling fan. End quote. Okay. So this... So is that every, 
So to give an idea of what he's saying, everybody knows that the winner of the Royal Rumble gets center spotlight in WrestleMania. He gets a shot at the championship belt, if I remember correctly, right? Yep. Now, this is Batista who got this crowd. Mm -hmm. And like everybody said, he doesn't have... And like Foley says, he doesn't have a 50-50 chance. You know, say what you will about John Cena, at least the dude knows how to work a crowd. Yeah. He has he has the charisma behind him. He just doesn't have the dance... Just doesn't have the dance prowess, if I would use a bad metaphor there. Uh, the fact that Daniel Bryan is snubbed for this does not surprise me. Like I've said before, Vince has shitted on other a- other acts before, and honestly, I feel bad for Mysterio because he's going to get the brunt end of this, and it's not his fault. I honestly think we should. I think we should agree together as a wrestling community that we shouldn't put the blame on Rey Mysterio. Well, Mysterio wasn't... Mysterio's not going to get any blame on this. You know, it was a gut reaction by the crowd. I know, know but... M- Mysterio I want, is... I want, to, I want to just throw that out there. Yeah. yeah. Ah, God damn it. <laughs> oh. As he tangles with himself. Oh, no, uh, the feedback. Oh, sorry. The feedback. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, Mysterio... Mysterio is going to be all right because he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Easy. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he's, he's he, Mysterio is going to be fine. It's just the fact that we're in the middle of changing uh, generations here. Pretty much. And it's not a smooth change. Yeah. People are ready for the new thing. And it's Daniel Bryan. But the old garb ain't letting go. Mm-hmm. And before we get on to a Monday Night Raw, the there is a couple notes. It's the fact that there were like ten or so rewrites before the airing of Monday Night Raw. I'm not surprised. After after probably what a lot of people had to say and the reaction that was built up against it, I'm not surprised that peep that they flipped their shit and tried to rewrite everything. Mm-hmm. So, here we go. Monday Night Raw. Alright, let's... Alright, let's hear what they fucked up. Okay. Uh, Triple H and Stephanie come out, and they go over the results of the Royal Rumble. And... uh, Triple H goes, Aw, you didn't get what you want. But that's okay, because our friend Dave Bautista won the Royal Rumble. You know, in in a... Stop, stop, stop. (laughs) Even if in that ideal character, I know you're probably characterizing yourself as like an asshole here, Triple H. Yeah, he is. I know you're trying to do that. But you are still the managing head of the company, and there's still that small underlining fact that there is the fact that you are saying boo hoo I can't we can't have Daniel Bryan in our championship I'm gonna put my friend instead in yeah and so, I, I, I love it when he said that giant middle finger up there for you <laughs> get off your high horse and actually do your goddamn job so, okay, so then Daniel Bryan, he interrupts. He's pissed about not being in the Royal Rumble. And the uh, the authority are giving them the, the uh, reach, not reach around, but the roundabout way, you know. Saying the same thing over again. He's too short. He's no. too crazy. People don't like him. No, 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 blah, no. Blah, 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 I'm no. guessing. He's, they were going the condescending, oh, we didn't want you to get hurt because you wrestled already. Meanwhile, everybody else has wrestled beforehand yeah. who has been in the Rumble, yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the hypocrisy is like, it's opaque. It's opaque, and yeah, I know they're doing that on purpose. Yeah, pretty much. They're doing it on purpose 
But that doesn't make it good writing, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. So Daniel Bryan wants a shot at the title at the Elimination Chamber. He wants in the match. And then uh, Triple H goes, you better watch what you say or they might show up. And they go, who? And the Shield come out. And Shield comes down. Daniel Bryan's with a the chair. They fight. And then Sheamus comes out. They fight. And then Cena comes out. They fight. Faces stand tall. Shield run away. Because this is going to be your main event. There's, And the main event is going to be the Shield versus uh, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, John and Cena. And, Cena. and the winner, the, the winning team gets to go into the Elimination Chamber. So all three of them. Okay. So we have that. Uh, next up. First match of the night, we have Sin Cara versus... Uh, no. Sin Cara and Mysterio versus Real Americans. Uh, by the way, Mysterio did not get any heat on this show. I'm surprised at that. This yeah. show's kind of a maturity with our group, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I would not be surprised in like the 90s or in the 80s they he would have gotten a shit ton of heat hmm. so not nothing much uh to talk about on this match however zeb coulter slaps jack swagger for motivation swagger's upset he goes into the ring and you know beats some ass or something you know um mm-hmm. uh cesaro hits an uppercut counter move on Sinkara. And then hits the equalizer. Real Americans win. Showing Hooray! Hooray! Oh, no right. one does anybody care about the the uh, real American heroes anymore. I do because you know, like I get it. Cesaro is awesome, but it's kind of a it's kind of a gimmick that's worn worn out. It's where like how many times can you say a hey, patriotism, patriotism, right wing, white. Right wing, right wing. You know, I can. I got upset at it at first because, well, it's a stupid gimmick and it's kind of alienating as. It's kind of alienating as a group to have that in here, but now it just is like, yeah, whatever. Well, uh, Zeb Coulter now has. Uh, he he write he writes signs uh-huh. to hold up during the entrance, and of course they're offensive and whatever. But you know, it, it's part of that card cartoonish transition oh they're trying it's uh flanderizing if i remember the trope correctly yeah it's literally and if people don't know what that means uh flanderizing is a flanderization is a termination created by tv tropes that describes like a basic of a character that this was meant to be this type of character he had an interesting thing and then throughout the degradation of this character, the cartoonish acts aspects just keep on blooming and blooming and blooming until he is a complete and utter caricature of his former self. Like all his all the big things are just what everybody now focuses on. That's basic flanderization. Yeah. So he's on the pathway. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That's fine. Honestly, that's probably as good as it gets because this is WWE and, and Big we, Bombastic is kind of the name. Game. Yeah, we've seen this hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we have Bad News Barrett. Bad News Barrett. Bad, that's that. My name is Barrett, and I'm afraid I got some bad news. So okay, what is uh, the bad news from Mr. Barrett? The bad news is is that we're gonna have a match later on tonight, and we're in Cleveland, and it's gonna be between the Miz and Dolph Ziggler because they're both from Cleveland. And the bad news is is that you're gonna have to watch it because Cleveland is a bunch of losers. Ah, uh, so typical blah blah blah. I'm your asshole heel motif. Yeah, 
and, and during SmackDown, he had a, another segment. It was The Miz versus Brodus Clay, and he led a boring chant. Ah, I see. <laughs> I see what they're doing. So, from the... They're doing a Miz-Wade uh, Barrett feud starting up. Yeah. And all the while, Wade Barrett's just going to troll everyone. And it's hilarious. I love it. I don't mind it, but this is... I hope it doesn't get to, like, the Michael overtly extreme case of trolling. No, it's not it, It's not going to be like that. That sooner or later, he's just going to insult somebody because his mother just died. No. <laughs> and no, but, Michael but could, Cole, we're not you... letting you forget that. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do you think? My name is White Bart, and I'm afraid I got some bad news. Your mother is dead. <laughs> Your mother is dead? Boo freaking who? I'm going to do what the big boss man did with the big show 40 years ago. And we're just going to run with that gimmick until the ground because that creates controversy and we need ratings. But then again, I got some bad news about that too. It's not going to generate the ratings. Gee, I wonder what... <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you It's almost like shame me... Fool me once, shame on me. Twice shame... No, for me once, shame on you. For me twice, shame on me. And then I got some more bad news. Oh, great. What's do, next? We're going to do the segment anyway. You got to one. You know, you got to wonder. They listen. They're listening to the fans, obviously. <laughs> as they're rewriting shit. Oh. But they don't <laughs> listen enough. It's like... This probably is the case that, like, they only have a group of writers for this one part, and then they shuttle, shuttle off a bunch of other writers to do another segment. So, up next, we have a cool off match Fandango versus R Truth, where nothing happens, and it was a bad match. Moving on. And it was a waste of our time. Yeah. Okay, so Randy Orton, he comes out. He calls the Elimination Chamber title defense garbage, not knowing what month it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batista, he interrupts. He goes, I've done two things that I said I was going to do, and now i got one more to do, and that's beat you for the title. And he goes, I don't care who's going to win the Elimination Chamber. I'm going to beat him. And then Brock Lesnar, he comes out with Paul Heyman. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Brock Lesnar <laughs> says, uh, Paul Heyman says that you got two options. One, option one, Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton tonight. Option two, Brock Lesnar versus Batista tonight. And, and I totally would think that the management would agree with to. This because, as we've all established, HR is run by a bunch of geese. Right. So, <laughs> so Brad Maddox, he was there doing the whole interview thing. So he runs off to tell the authority. More on that later. But now we have the Battle of Cleveland. This, this was actually, that was on the title card. The Battle of Cleveland. Yeah, Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz. That sounds like the dorkiest thing I have ever heard in my life. Uh, there is the, uh, the commentators had a field day with this match because it's the battle of Cleveland. How could you not, not make fun of it? It's Cleveland. There was a Cleveland rocks chant. There was a Cleveland sucks chant. What and, is this? The Drew Carey show? Yeah. And Jesus Christ. First, am I pulling out a metaphor? Jesus Christ. I'm pulling out a reference out of my ass. Uh, I thought to myself, why can't this be a loser leaves town match where the loser actually has to stay in Cleveland? You know, because why? because that makes total sense. Exactly, because it's Cleveland. Who wants to? I mean, at least they're not Detroit. 
Well, to be fair, my brother lives in Columbus, which is only a few minutes away from Cleveland, and from what I hear, it's not that bad. But then again, that's Columbus. So, take it what you will. Maybe Cleveland is... Maybe Cleveland is, like, the most boring town in the world, where they show nothing but their bottle cap collections. Yeah. Yeah, so... Ziggler wins with the zigzag. Thankfully, ending the match, it was horrible. I'm not surprised. Uh, next up... When you build it on a gimmick that's stupid, there's only one other thing you have to do. Put it on a pole! Yeah, I I wish it was... Cleveland on a pole match! Yeah, I wish it was a Cleveland on a pole match, or a, or a downtown Cleveland street fight. Which actually might be very dangerous, considering, like, guns and knives. Because it's Cleveland, I'm sorry. Yeah, that would be pretty dangerous. Okay, that's for CZW. Anyways, uh, fourth match of the night, we have Ry Baxel. Ry Baxel. Versus the Usos. And Usos win, and it was okay, it was just there. Just a filler of time. Yeah. And it continues with Kofi Kingston versus Alberto Del Rio. Del Rio gets pissed off because the crowd's having none of it. And <laughs> start chanting for JBL. JBL stands up, gets on camera with a huge pop. Uh, Del Rio walks over to the, the rope closest to the announcer's booth and Tells him to sit down because he's pissed off. Oh, great. I don't know whether or not you think that was planned. No, that wasn't planned because we've seen this side of Del Rio before in unplanned segments like the uh, Sin Cara finger botch. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, uh, he just can't get a break because. It's he's fighting Kofi. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, I do kind of feel bad for both Kofi and Alberto on this one. You know, that's kind of a dickish thing to do. But then again, if your match is boring, I'm sorry, people are gonna try to have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're here to be entertained, and if you're not entertaining, they'll make their own own entertainment. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the Rhodes Brothers versus New Age Outlaws. This is the rematch mm-hmm. for the Tag Team Championship. Lawler says that both teams have the advantage by having the rematch a day later. Which completely makes sense. Yeah, and he gets called out on it by both the other commentators, Michael Cole and JBL. <laughs> this completely makes sense. How the hell do you... That doesn't make any sense. And then and then Jalala goes, well, you see, the new it's an advantage for the New Age Outlaws because they're on a hot streak. And then the Rhodes Brothers they're also have the advantage because they're mad about losing the titles. So, everyone is utterly Still doesn't confused. make sense to me. Still doesn't make any sense. Yeah, everyone's utterly and totally confused. Uh... This is this is also probably going to be on Botchamania on the segment. Everyone talks too much, because, or as I like to call it, shut the hell up. And Jesse James is just—he's talking the entire match, pretty much. He's not calling spots; he's just like reacting. You know, oh god! It's, oh god! Is he doing one of those like uh... shit? What was that one thing where they had? I think like one of the. The diva? Oh, oh, God. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. Like the lay cool? It no. wasn't the lay cool thing? Oh, thank no. God. No, it's not a lay cool thing. It, it's like a reaction, like, he, he gets hit, and he goes, oh, sweet Jesus, sort of thing. And that, and when both Honestly, him and, I think that's more him, his actual reaction. <laughs> yeah. And him and Billy Gunn are outside the ring. It's like, we don't have to do this. And then they get back in the ring, and they start fighting again, you know? It, it's It's... It's entertainment. You know, I, I'm liking this. It's entertaining, but at the same time, it's kind of silly. Yeah, it is, but we need some silly. We we honestly do. 
But then Brock Lesnar shows up. He's pissed Why? off. Why not? And let me guess, he's going to wreck everybody's shit? Yeah, he beats up the bros, F5s both of them. And then Heyman is all like, the authority chose option three or else. So here's Brock Lesnar. He's going to beat up the Rose Brothers with the chair and breaks the chair. Because he can't beat up the New Age Outlaws. He's already done that. Have they? Yeah, he bo- he beat them up when they returned off of their hiatus. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have a Divas match, a Divas match, that tag match that I didn't bother. Ah, uh, bathroom break is yeah. what you're saying. Let's see. Naomi pulls out the victory and hits the rear view on AJ, getting the victory. I make the comment, the ref has to check that because it might be loaded. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, God. Hey, you, Kip? You there, Casey? Hold on. Oh, sorry. If I'm getting... Feedback. Okay. Uh, okay, we're back. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So, <laughs> anyways. Yeah. That, Big Badonka Dog hits AJ in the face. She probably sells it like death. Yes. And uh, Naomi gets the win. Continuing the feud. Continuing the feud and looking at her ass. Which I can totally get behind. Oh. Next up, we have the Hall of Fame introduction. Next. Yeah. Next Hall if of I, Fame. If I remember, the next Hall of Famer is. Is Jake the Snake Roberts. A good choice. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, he deserves it. Now that he's sober, he can actually, you know, give a, a speech. And God bless, God bless him for doing this. So you, if, you, if you ever, if anybody's ever watched Beyond the Mat, that uh, documentary that was in the ninety, late nineties mm-hmm. about wrestling, oh my God, he was a wreck. Yeah, you know, you know, you think, you know that uh, exaggeration from Rami the Ram uh, Johnson from the Wrestler. Yeah, that was Jake. Yeah. The it, snake. Yeah, it pretty much was, and Jake had, like, I don't know how many retirement matches after that uh, that documentary. Oh, God, yes. So, it, it's like, okay, we're done here. Please, just sober up. And then he went to DDP, and he did the DDP yoga thing, and pretty much saved his life, quite literally. Another point for Diamond Dallas Page. Mm-hmm. Not only did he do a use, not only is he helping people out with yoga, he saved Jake the Snake Roberts. Is DDP in the Hall of Fame yet? I don't think so. He should be. But then again, he was a WWE. If I remember correctly, he was more WCW than WWE. Yeah, but. But they, he deserves they, they, it. They still get in. I think he still deserves it because he was a decent wrestler back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, he. He was the WCW People's Champ. Mm hmm. And, you know, and his work outside the ring is really doing wonders, so I think he definitely deserves it. Yeah, from what I hear, he's actually doing miracle work. Yeah, he is. I might try it out one day. Uh, nice. Let's see. Uh, main event time. We have Cena, Sheamus, Daniel Bryan versus The Shield. Elimination Chamber qualifier. One note. The original script for this show was to have individual matches, but it all got condensed into one thing. So, why? Because we're bored. Oh. Also, probably because they had like a million matches beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is probably why a lot of the matches on this show kind of sucked. Because they were stretched out. Because it's like last minute. Oh God, yes, and uh. Not thing against anybody else, but you can't, you can't do that, man. 
I mean, these guys are professionals, yes, but this is kind of, that's kind of hard to pull off. Like, you have to make a stage combat scene in one day. Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah, it's not only that, but in this generation, it's it's more called out, more choreographed than it used to be. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's even harder for these guys just to make something happen. Oh, God, yes. Okay, so uh, notes I have. Brian and Rollins have a great combo. They, they were like a five-minute segment where both of them were in the ring together. Everyone else was, you know, knocked out. Oh, um, yeah. I really liked this match. I loved it because it was Mainly, like... Go ahead. I'm guessing like it was just most of the time Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins going at each other, right? Well, a big chunk of it was, but Sheamus and Cena also had their moments. Uh, Roman Reigns did the Superman punch to Super Cena, mm-hmm. which was awesome. <laughs> uh, Dean Ambrose looked like a goof because he's a goof. Yeah, he's. I kind of figured as much, and yeah, his star is starting to win, I think. Uh, the match... Ends with interference. Naturally. However, it, it's the Wyatts. They interfere, interfere and attack John Cena. Bell rings. Everyone's like mad. It's like, the match ended. What the hell? And then the faces get uh, the victory through disqualification. Because you don't expect this. It's like, oh, it's no contest, whatever. No, this. we actually follow logic this time. Well, technically, technically, this was interference by a third party. It should be considered no contest. Well, no, because they attacked one side. So that means the other side got disqualified. I well, get. Rather, rather, whether if they are associated with them or not, it still happened. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so res- I... wrestling logic prevails, and the shield gets get pissed off to high hell. Mm -hmm. They start like wrecking the announce table and like, cause this was going to be their chance to, you know, get a title shot. And it's like, no, God damn it. Wreck everything. No, you're not ready yet for the title shot. You have to split up first. And then only Roman Reigns is probably going to get it. Mm -hmm. Ambrose, you're probably going the way of Jake and the snake. Oh, I mean, he's going to turn in. Uh, oh, I don't even want to continue with that thought. Okay. So. Yeah, that's a fate worse than death. So, okay, so that was Raw. Raw was a lot better than the Royal Rumble itself, which isn't saying much, but it from, is. From what I've heard, it's just as boring. But I, I, the two, I mean, the opening segment... The Bad News Barrett and the main event were the things to watch. Mm, three so, things out of what? 500? Uh, about 10 or so segments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but hey, it's... I don't know... You know what? I think it's okay for me to watch and then blab about it on this network. Not re- it's, Twitch this is a network... network. Twitch is a network, by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so, the whole point is that while everyone else can do their little boycott, I will suffer for you guys, and you will be caught up. Yes, so your, you... suffer- your suffering is not in vain, Casey. So, yeah. <laughs> Next week. I sense a bit of bitter- bitterness in his voice when he says that. Next week, we have a... I'll see if I can get to SmackDown. Probably. Probably. Maybe, maybe I'll record TNA to see how they're doing. Maybe. Let's get a few <laughs>, laughs at that. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, we'll fun. see what happens as we go toward Elimination Chamber. And see how this train wreck gets sorted out. Yeah. Because, yeah, we got 10 or so weeks to WrestleMania. 
We'll see how it goes. On My se- prediction is badly. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see you next week. On the sun- to- Go ahead. Oh, sorry. On the Sunset oh. Flip Wrestling Podcast. Hope to dear God that it gets fixed sooner or later because... Fit. Shit's about to fall. Okay, that was good.